Mute. Hi, I'm Rama, and I'm pleased to move forward with you and with Zola in this new series called the Bumuntu. Tradition, our ancestrality, simply teaches us that we must all without exception have a state of mind. In a previous podcast, we discussed how the Bumuntu is the horizontal connection between things, while the Kimuntu is the vertical connection between things. The Kimuntu is between the Muntu and the high world, and the Bumuntu is between the Muntu and the horizontal world, the world that surrounds it. Remember? All right. The topic we're going to focus on today, dear Pangi, is of course based on the primordial Congo wisdom. The tools are there, available. So, here we go. Our goal is to acquire here the necessary tools that will allow us to advance on the path of Zola, the path of the Supreme Consciousness. The Epangi, we're thus going to access together the Congo tradition. But as those from the Kimuntu School of Initiation know, Congo is a state of being. Congo is the state that we must all reach. Ko, as in going towards, go the black circle. Congo is a state that allows us to go towards the energy of Mama Wandombi, the unique divine consciousness in Kikongo language, the Black Virgin. It is a state, Ko, in which we tame the Ngo, the energy of the hidden circle, the Black Circle, the Black Sun. It is only when we access this state called Leopard Tamer, in which a human being has access to the Ngo, that hidden circle, the Black Circle, the Black Sun, the Ngo, in which Mama Wandombi manifests, that really things will begin. We will therefore use a paradigm, a prism based on the ancestral wisdom of Congo. For us at the Kimuntu School of Initiation, Congo is not a religion, okay? I repeat, Congo is not a religion. Congo is also not a tribe. This does not interest us. For us, Congo is an art. An art. Indeed, any human being who through the Kimuntu School of Initiation reaches levels of high initiations, reaches in fact the state of Congo, the cosmic family that we've been building together for a few years now, dear Pangi. You see, there are two types of beings under the earth. A. They believe everything they told. Yes. There are beings, dear Pangi, who indeed believe everything they told. You tell them, you see, your ancestors, they had no civilization. They had no writings, in fact. And yeah, they were savages. And Akuna Matata, no worries. If it is said, if it is written in a book, oh my, it must be true. So they swallow. They just take it all in. This is an anomaly. Yes, it is an anomaly. This way of perceiving things is not the way the Bumuntu teaches. Yeah. There are people who believe everything they're told. They don't double check anything. They just take everything at face value. And next to those are people who don't believe in any idea other than their own. I repeat. There are people who don't believe in any idea other than their own. They are convinced that they know everything better than everyone else. These are people who think they have knowledge. So there are these two groups of people. Those who believe everything they're told and those who believe that they know what they know is the supreme knowledge. Dear Pangi. Now, right between these two beings is a third. Between absolute naivety and absolute intellectual arrogance, there is, of course, a balance. The question we must ask ourselves is, in which category are we? Are we yes-yes people? Yeah, people who just say yes to everything? (laughs) I don't know if this is proper English, but oh well, yes-yes people. Do we believe because we believe? Being some kind of useless believer? A naive one? Or are we in some form of absolute intellectual arrogance because we have read two, three books and have become incapable of accessing certain knowledge, 
certain energies, certain experiences. We believe that by having read two, three books, well, we know everything. <laughs> we know everything. <laughs> okay, so there are these two states. Those who are told whatever and, well, they believe. And those who, because they have a doctorate, a master, and because they have read four or five books, well, yes, they know everything. Okay, as I said before, in the middle of these two extreme states, there is a balance. And that's what I'm speaking to you about today. Because my Zola Pangi, it is clear that for us who are initiated at the Kimuntu School of Initiation, a balance exists. A balance that can be accessed by developing the Bumuntu or Ubuntu, which I will define later, because the purpose of this presentation today is to first lay the ground. That's why one must understand that to have access to Bumuntu, one must develop the spirit of the critical thinking. To have access to Bumuntu, to have access to the state of connection and balance, To have access to the wisdom that the elders have left us with, we must first develop a faculty that we call today as critical mind or critical thinking. Dear Pangi, mm-hmm. things have begun. It is clear that a human being who is incarnated on earth and does not have a critical mind or critical thinking can in no way access the Ubuntu or the Bumuntu of the ancestral tradition. I repeat... A human being who is incarnated on earth and does not have a critical mind or critical thinking can in no way access the Ubuntu or the Bumuntu of the tradition of the ancestors. Mm -hmm. You heard me. This simply means, dear Pangi, that in order to have access to the Bumuntu, which is a state that I'm going to present to you during the years to come, it is necessary first that each one of us can develop what is called critical thinking. So I'm going to go slowly. And I recommend you take notes. Take notes, Pangi, take notes. It is very important because we are going to enter into high level things. Very, very high level things. We have no choice. The time has come. Tango ifreni. This means, my, do- my Zola Pangi, dear brothers, dear sisters, that we need the spirit of critical thinking. Now, since chains were put on our necks, since our ancestors lived the historical trauma, since we no longer have the mastery of the founding myth, since the melanoderm Muntu, the Muntu, the human being who is incarnated on the earth, has been traumatized by the intervention of the entities of the astral and other multidimensionalities who took control of our reality. Since we are people who were put in boats, where our mothers were raped, our fathers castrated, since dear Pangi, we were sold, we have lived this trauma of the black coat. Since that other who does not have access to melanin, or we say the melanin in relation to the quantity that we have, since we have suffered this, all that, dear Pangi, we have lost something. Yes, indeed we have been reprogrammed. You must understand that as a direct descendant of those who have suffered rapes, massacres, traumas, we have genetically inherited that burden. I think you know about epigenetics today, right? Well, epigenetics basically teaches us that the DNA of the Muntu can be impacted by its environment, which means, dear Pangi, that we have undergone troubles that have led us to become what we have become today. We have gone from the glory of the builders of the temples, incredible infrastructures, bearers of leopard skins, golden beings like our brothers from Ghana, the Ashanti that we see today. Mm -hmm. Now imagine... Imagine a whole community of people of this caliber at the time of our ancestors. We went from being capable of creating civilizations to, 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 oh my, to beings capable of creating nothing. We went from the spiritual maturity of the state of Ko Ngo, tamer of leopards, with that power of connection to the sacred source, 
do this. Kitty beggars in the neighborhood. I think you know with what epigenetics teaches us that any being who has experienced starvation in his or her life inherits the genetic burden or handicap leading to a disconnection. And as soon as the human being enters this phase of disconnection, then the human being hardly can care about his own people. Mm -hmm. How many people today, you, 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 you right here, you who are listening to me at this very moment, think about this. How many? How many people in their small income each month think about those children who are part of our community starving all over the continent, in the Caribbean, in Haiti, for instance? How many people think of those women who are part of our community alone, valiantly raising our children, bravely facing the disproportionate patriarchy of our time, are underpaid, abused, violated, scorned, oppressed, killed? How many of those young people, men and women, how many think of those? Those young people, men and women, who are part of our community, dissolution by an uncertain future, desperate, going as far as to risk even lose their lives in hope of a better future. Dear Pengi, it's complicated. The loss of the Bumuntu has totally disconnected us from what we are and what we have always been. That is why today, through the Kimuntu, we are entering a new phase of expansion of consciousness. Through the Kimuntu, we will also receive the Bumuntu. Yes, we've gone from high glories to the state today of little doggies from the block selling donuts. That's what we've come to. Children, women, young people, men are suffering all over. But, well, we're very good at pretending. We pretend. People pretend. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, this is not fair. This is not right. Oh, I'm heartbroken. Something must be done. Some, this got to stop. Well, and then what? Stop. We stop there. Because, well, look, who cares? It's sad, dear Pangi. We've gone from the state of unconditional love to this, where every month of every year, we have to wait for crumbs of the agricultural crops, foods that are rotten by chemicals that the West gives us, bags of rice, while people loot our natural resources, diamonds, uranium, oil, everything you know, and we live in sheet metal today. Charity, by example, begins with oneself, Yet, by oneself, we can't even begin. How is that possible? It is thus clear that we must change the way we operate. It is thus clear that this state of transition our people has gone through has removed the critical thinking and thus the access to the Ubuntu in us. Dear Pangi, our ancestrality, from which the Congo tradition of the Kimuntu school of initiation takes its root, will lead us to this state. The Congo tradition of the Kimuntu School of Initiation is thus reopening these doors that have been inaccessible to us by historical trauma. More on this in the podcast to come. I'm Rama, speaking to you from the land of our ancestors, all the way in Senegal. Listen to the voice of Africa. Jeff Matondo, and see you next time. Zola. So